Renaissance period. Many famous people lived in Italy, Florence, have changed the world today, such as Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and even Dante Alighieri. One of the reasons that um, Florence flourished so much was because of its great location on the Arnos River. This location gave it great advantages for trade and commerce. By the 14th century, by the 14th century, Florence was Europe's banking center. There were many wealthy people who lived there, and they attracted many tourists every year. Florence was also very interested in art. They spent lots of time and money on art. Here are some pictures of Florence. Now, let's get to the specifics. Florence made many advances in architecture and engineering. They were interested in um, rounded arches, as you can see here, domes, right there, and straight pillars, which are all the way along there. They invented some things called plazies, which were palaces, and many rich people owned them. Sometimes they had houses on top of shops. The houses are up there and the shops are down there. They also invented public buildings, where people would hang out in plant, grand yet welcoming settings. Another major thing that Florence made was the Duomo, but I'll talk to you about that later. Despite engineering and architecture, Florence made many advances in painting. Florence artists were influenced by humanism. The Medicis, one of the richest families in Florence, spent lots of money on statues, paintings, and palaces. Florentine artists wanted to show lifelike paintings and feelings in their paintings. They created realistic backgrounds, resulting in flat and rigid, rigid paintings. One great example of this is the Adoration of Maggie. One great discovery during the Renaissance era was the discovery of perspective. One of these, one aspect of the discovery of perspective is the way that lines come closer together as they get further away. As you can see, the lines of people get closer together the further away they are. One other way is that the closer something is, the bigger, the further away, the smaller. People are bigger here, and way in the back up there, they're very small. Also, shading figures made them look more 3D and realistic. Some great artists, like Masakio, use geometry to, dis to solve the distance between figures. Also, Florentine artists invented many new paints, such as oil-based paints. Here are some examples of some great paintings. Next, Florence had made many advances in literature. Like painting, Florentine writers were influenced by humanism as well. They had secular writing, which is non-religious writing. This expressed thoughts and feelings of life in a new intensity of detail. People also wrote in their own dialect. This way, more people could understand what was in their writing. One example of great writing is the Divine Comedy, which was a poem. This is the cover of one of the Divine Comedy poems. It was by Dante Alighieri. Next, the Duomo. The Duomo was a very great church which was built during the Renaissance times. It was very respected and is one of the greatest places in all of Europe, in Florence. 
Here's some pictures. Now, let's go to one of my great friends, Bob, who is now in Florence right now. Thank you, George. You made it just in time to hear the bells of the Duomo ringing in Florence, Italy. The Duomo was one of the greatest architectural achievements in all of Florence during the Renaissance times. Let's go check out the inside. Now that we're inside, you can see how amazing the Duomo really is. As you can imagine, it took lots of time and effort to finish the Duomo. It all started when Arnfolo di Cambio laid down the first brick in 1296. Once he died, the project halted for 30 years. It started up again in 1331 when Andrea Pisano and Gaiato um, continued the project as the architects. The dome was also very hard to construct. They had a competition to see who would design the dome. The competition was between Filippo Branchetti and Annie Della Lane. In the, as a result, Branchetti won. He decided to make so that eight arches would meet at the top of the dome. This way, there wouldn't have to be any center construction to support the dome. The project was finished in 1436. They, the, prod, the dome weighed 37,000 tons and used over 4 million bricks. The dome was a very major part of the Duomo, which means they had to find the perfect architect. So they designed a competition to see who could design the best dome. The competition was between Filippo Branchetti and Arti Della Lena. In the end, Branchetti won. He designed a dome so that eight arches would meet at the top of the dome. This way, they wouldn't have to have any inside supporting structure. In the end, the whole, Duomo, the whole dome weighed 37,000 tons and used over 4 million bricks. The project was completely finished in 1436.